Hello and welcome to PBCJ Presents, our weekly discussion series in which we examine some of the hot button issues of the day. I am Simone Absalom Gale. This week, our focus is the budget. On March 8, Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, presented to the nation a $912 billion budget for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. Majority of this spending, or 59.2%, will go towards recurrent expenditure, 33.7% public debt, and 7.9% will finance capital expenditure. But how does this impact local stakeholders, in particular the private sector? Joining us to discuss the highlights of the budget, issues and opportunities is Mr. Theodore Mitchell, a member of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica's Economic Policy Committee. Let's start with the highlights. What stood out for you? Well, what stood out for me was the fact that um, the government now is expected to generate a fiscal surplus and you know um, that is indeed positive given that um, what we have seen over past years was um, you know, massive deficits. So it does um, feed into the profile regarding the reduction in debt and indeed that is welcomed by us. In addition to that, we are pleased with the increase in capital spending. Looking at the profile, we see where it is that capital spending is expected to increase by 20% over the estimate or the estimated spending for fiscal year 2021-22. So those are the things that stood out to me um, in this um, budget. Let's go back to your first point. Is that possible though? With respect to? The first point that you brought up. Okay, in terms of the fiscal surplus. Indeed, it is possible. Um, yes, we are operating now in an um, environment where the risk level is increasing, but assuming it is that um, the, the um, economy plays out how it is that we expect regarding the assumption which are built in then we do expect um, you know revenue to increase and for the spending profile to match what is um, envisaged in the budget one of the highlights for me was the uh, the dollars the introduction of the new two thousand dollar bill and all that is that a result of inflation though I don't think that it is a result of inflation. If it was a result of inflation, then um, recall it is that you have a $5,000 bill, so you would be able to print a $10,000 bill. Um, to the extent that you have different denomination um, lower down, I think it is that um, sometimes it is that persons um, want 2000 as opposed to the $5,000 because I myself get confused um, because of the closeness of the $5,000 bill and the $1,000 bill. Coming out of COVID though, is this the right time to introduce a new bill and to change up the aspects of the other bills as well? I don't think that will um, cause any issue at all, right? Um, you, you're just talking about um, a, a change in denomination, right? Uh, that will have no significant issue for, uh, from our perspective. Because some persons were concerned, I mean, with the, the US dollars, you know, and our dollars slipping and stuff like that. So we have nothing to worry about. It's just a change in <laughs> the denomination. Just a change in terms of denomination. What would have affected um, inflation is if it is that the government was, or the Bank of Jamaica was expanding the money supply and increase, uh, uh, rather, um, a new denomination does not add to the money supply. All right. What are your thoughts on the proposed reduction in asset tax it's currently at 0.25% uh, or 0.25%. Uh, what will this mean for the private sector? Uh, it is a welcome change. While it is that it's a proposal based on the, um, the if it is that the government meets its revenue profiles, etc. Good. The thing is that it's not a productive based tax and it is a tax on um, it's a tax, it, 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 it defeats the purpose with regards to the operation of private sector and for productive entity, good? And a reduction in that tax will free up resources to the private sector where it is that they are better able to utilize the resources to um, engage in more meaningful productive activity as opposed to um, paying it over to the government. I feel like I have to ask this question for the man on the street. Explain what that is, the asset tax. What is it? Okay. All right, so let's say it is that you have this computer here, good? And the government says, well, um, you have to pay 10%. Assuming the computer is uh, um, $1,000, then you have to pay $100. Just on the computer, 
So it's not a matter of you're engaging in any productive activities by virtue of you owning the asset, you're paying that tax. Good? That doesn't result, redound positively or favorably to business activities because you're taxing an asset and not um, output or profit. Is this a yearly tax? It is an yearly tax and currently it is levied on financial institutions. All right, stay with us. PBCJ Presents will be right back. We're talking about the budget for this fiscal year. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to PBCJ Presents. We're talking about the budget. That's the 2022-2023 budget. Now, we're speaking with Mr. Theodore Mitchell from the PSOJ. While no new taxes were announced, a review of the estimates of revenue and expenditure indicates that estimated tax revenue is projected to increase by 65.3 billion dollars of estimates for the previous fiscal year. Explain this, Mr. Mitchell. Okay, built into the budget would have been certain assumptions regarding inflation deep and depreciation of the currency as well as natural growth. There's what is termed tax buoyancy, where it is that taxation generally grows by a proportion of um, inflationary impact in the economy. Good. So um, what you're seeing um, in terms of the increase in taxation is a reflection of the sort of assumption which is built into the government um, uh, built into the, the, the whole um, estimate of expenditure, which includes, among other things, inflation, um, depreciation of the currency, and natural growth in the economy, more so real growth. All right. So you were explaining it to me in, in, in a simpler way when you were saying, you know, giving me the example of the importation of the phone and how that reflects on the common man, the retailers, how it will affect the retailer coming down. The line. Uh, you know, I'm looking at it from the perspective of the government, uh, the increase in the revenue firstly, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I'm going to use some large numbers just to simply bring it across. So it is that from the perspective of the importing of uh, importation of an item, so you're importing a phone, let's assume the phone costs 100 US dollars, and let's assume that the tax on that phone is 100%. Is a, is a hundred percent. Good. So, um, you know, we're going to assume that um, the, the exchange rate is one dollars, right? So it is that um, given that the, the, that the tax is 100 percent, so it's exchange rate in J dollars, it's um, 100 J dollars times the tax, which is no. Uh, so the tax is going to be one hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, if it is that the FX rates now move to two J dollars to one US dollars, then that phone in terms of when it comes to that customs, it's going to be worth two hundred dollars. Good. So now that 100% tax is going to result in $200 in revenue for the government. So, um, you know, the nature of taxation, both at the port and from the perspective of inflation, good, result in increase in revenue for the government. All right. Okay, let me move on because I put you on the spot there. We're talking about taxes, though. So no new taxes. At least that's what they're saying, that you can, you, you're not seeing any new taxes. What is your reaction as a member of the PSOJ? Well, the truth is that there is no new taxes, but, it, but um, then there is inflation, and inflation essentially is a tax on you. Good? So it is that it doesn't rep represent a tax to the government, but it's a tax on your income, it's a tax on your spending power. Good? So it is that um, you know, there is concern from our perspective with regards to the high level of inflation because of its impact on your spending power. Explain inflation so that we can, you know, understand overall what's happening. Okay, inflation just speaks to the increase in prices, right? Good. So if it is that um, you're seeing where it is that across, you're buying bread and bread moves from um, $500 per loaf to $550. Mm -hmm. Good. Because a shorty uh, yeah. bread now is $210 and I could get a shorty bread for $200. So I'm, fe I'm feeling well, it. So suppose it is that that's you're feeling the impact of inflation there. The price of the good is going up. So persistent increase in prices is essentially inflation. All right. I I'll, I'll leave that one alone for now. <laughs> Government loan receipts are projected to decrease by 6 0.2 billion. How do you see this affecting the business community? Before I get there, in terms of just looking at just the simple reduction in um, government loan receipt, you have to look at you now the profile with regards to both um, 
the fiscal deficits, etc., and um, the amount, uh, what you call amortization, in terms of loans that the government have to pay. Good. So a combination of the fiscal deficit, quote-unquote, surplus, and the loans that the government will have to pay back determines how much loan the government is borrowing, right? We are pleased with what is happening regarding the overall fiscal profile because it um, speaks to reduction in um, government loan borrowing. Good. Um, when the government borrows in the market, um, the, uh, in, in terms of the capital market, there's a sizable amount of, or rather, there's a limited amount of funds that is out there. Good. So the government is competing with private entity for that resources. And to the ex if it is that the government is, um, you know, borrowing significant sum, then it means that there is limited amount of funds available to the private sector to engage in investment. So it is a positive thing, a positive thing from our perspective, mm -hmm. and we welcome um, what is happening regarding fiscal operation from that standpoint okay so do you think they can maintain it though uh, based on the fiscal profile right if you may recall that there is no legislation um, determining the spending of the government uh, as it relates to the primary balance and meeting a particular target as it relates to debt to GDP, good. So if it is that the government maintains fiscal discipline, if the economy grows as expected, um, you know, then it is highly probable that um, you know, the government will meet um, you know, that sort of fiscal profile regarding loan, um, um, loans in general. All right, stay with us. PBCJ Presents will be right back with more on the budget for 2022-2023 fiscal year. Welcome back to PBCJ Presents. We're talking to the PSOJ's Theodore Mitchell and we're breaking down some of the issues uh, within the budget for the 2022-2023 fiscal year in Jamaica. Now, will the planned increase in public sector wages affect the private sector? Do you think, though, that uh, the ministry will have to go back for another review. Okay, just um, to note that there's risk to the budget um, in terms of what is happening externally, plus it is that there's always risk to the budget if you haven't completed fully the negotiations with regards to the, um, the, the unions. Good. For, for the best, to the best of my knowledge, um, you know, a, 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 a large group, or the negotiations have been completed with um, you know, some of the groups but there are some groups um, which are still outstanding in terms of the, the wage issue. So, um, but the ministry would have built into its budget profile the possibility of um, you know, whatever increase is expected there. Now, if it is that the increase that is granted or agreed on is beyond what is budgeted, then naturally it would have implication in terms of um, wages and salaries. But I don't foresee any significant rise um, you know, which will cause any major concern um, as it relates to the, what is in the budget. Now, will the consolidation of payroll taxes affect the operation of the private sector? Do you think it's a good or a bad move? It is a good uh, move from the private sector perspective uh, with regards to efficiency. Now, just think about it where it is that you have to make payment to several different entities. Good. It, um, you know, take away from the time of whomever is engaged in that activity. So by virtue of consolidation, it improved efficiency which in, in, um, for the private sector entity and the move is welcome. Do you believe it will redound in overall rates though? I don't see a reduction in overall rates good from this, but what it does is that it just simply improves efficiency in terms of the payment of taxes. The finance minister announced that the import customs duty on the importation of electric vehicles will be reduced from 30% to 10% for an initial five-year period. Will the private sector support this initiative? Uh, is a 10% tax uh, low enough? In, uh, I mean, we always support, as we were discussing previously, <laughs> reduction in taxes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have been good to have no taxes. However, the truth is that um, we have a, economy, a country to operate, um, you know, infrastructures, paying public sector workers, etc. So there's a need for taxes to do that. We do welcome um, the policy, um, which, um, you know, 
uh, would perhaps lead to more EVs. It would perhaps lead to um, you know, reduction in petrol consumption, which we know have a whole lot of negative inter for, for the environment. So from the private sector perspective, we welcome um, the minister's initiative. Well, that certainly bodes well. I mean, I'm hearing that there is an entity already looking to um, partner, two entities, Stewart's Motors, uh, and another entity looking to partner and import uh, electric vehicles to put more electric vehicles on the market, which will be good for energy consumption. But some persons are saying that the batteries for these vehicles will cost more than the vehicle themselves. Uh, are you guys looking at that within the private sector, how you can offset some of those costs on the small man? Electric vehicles <laughs> do cost a tiny <laughs> sum and the batteries are very costly. Good, it's part of the overall cost. Um, you know, as it is that um, technology evolve, I suppose it is that we'll see a reduction in battery costs. But for now it is that they're elevated and it's beyond, um, you know, the government or we in the private sector, um, you know, to reduce those costs. It's going to be dependent on, you know, what um, happened outside in terms of the technology and the pricing of um, the batteries. But I think the time is right now for us to make the switch and, and, and ensure that the public can make this affordable. Fuel prices are rising, skyrocketing, skyrocketing in my view. Um, don't you think? I mean, how do we manage this? Isn't this one way that we can offset some of those costs? There is a, 2030, a Vision 2030 plan mm -hmm. to actually have 30% uh, renewable energy um, you know, yeah. in, in the mix. Exactly. But we are currently at around 16%. Um, Isn't it this the right take, time now to make the switch though? It will take some time, if you may recall, it is costly to do so. In fact, JPS grid is not necessarily configured to, um, to receive um, some of the, uh, the, 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 ener the new energy um, mm -hmm. re re in terms of, um, you know, wind, solar, etc. You have to configure the grid in t to allow it to, um, you know, to, 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 to utilize um, you mm -hmm. know, those energy. So that will take some time because it requires investment, etc. As it relates to gas prices, recall it is that um, you know, we are at takeoff prices um, as it relates to fuel. We, we import those, good. There's nothing that we can do. Currently, we see where it is that um, you know, inter, um, the, um, uh, the, the, pr the price on the, the, the spot market is relatively high, but it is that uh, you know, forward price is also relatively high as well. Um, what this is in the signaling to us is a possibility of hedging. Good. I think it is that um, you know we should look at it because it is that um, you know in the future, notwithstanding what is happening now, it is one of the way of um, you know try and relieve it, or, or limiting the surprise as it relates to increasing energy costs. Barbados is capping their per litre price. Do you think that's a way that our budget can, our government, sorry, can go? Should they cap it? It is a possibility. I, I won't say they should. Uh, and why it is that I say that they should. They, they, they shouldn't cap it just, right? Uh, you'd have to look at the budget profile and um, what prices um, they, they put into the, the budget as it relates to gas price and the taxes that they're expected to raise. I think it is that um, it's about $67, good. But being that gas price, or rather gas, um, the price of fuel on the international market is currently $100. It doesn't mean that it's going to remain $100 over the next um, you know, couple of months. So you have to wait and see somewhat, good, to determine whether or not it is that that, that is done. Because if indeed a cap is placed right now, it could have implication if it is that, say, fuel, fuel price, for whatever reason, or, or oil price, um, should fall significantly. Good? Um, but in the scheme of things, it is welcome, but you have to be careful. All right, let's talk about digital currency. Will the business community buy into the Jamaica digital currency, which is backed by BOJ, Bank of Jamaica? The business community wholeheartedly <laughs> accept the currency, the digital currency as is. All right, let's look also at uh, the housing industry. One thing coming out of uh, the budget presentation is the fact that uh, they're looking at uh, ensuring that up to three persons can join uh, their, their NHD uh, benefits to acquire real estate because it's pretty, uh, I wouldn't say difficult, but it's competitive out there in terms of financing and real estate. Um, your opinion on that, is it a good yeah. move? It is a good move. It is welcome. Um, you know, there are groups of individuals who contribute to the NHT and they are not able to access a home because it is that their income does not allow them to. 
good in terms of making the payments to NHT by broadening the, the amount of individuals who can acquire a home, you know, pooling their resources. It allows persons, especially from the lower end of the income ladder, to now own a home. And recall it is that, um, you know, you're talking about building wealth for future generation, and home ownership is one of the foremost means by which it is that people can use to build their wealth and um, you know, improve future generation in terms of their wealth capacity. No three persons can come together, but the price on the market is too high. What can the government do, in your opinion, to well, this, ensure this that you know, the little man can at least afford to buy a piece of property? I, I get what it is that you're saying, Simone, and like you, I feel your pain. Um, the issue at hand is a matter of the availability of land space within um, you know, the areas where persons want to live. So, for example, you look at um, you know, the um, Golden Triangle, an acre of land may be selling there for upwards of one million US dollars. So, you know, for individuals, for developers to generate a return, they have to price the unit um, you know, at a relatively high rate. Um, I think it is that it's a, um, what, what needs to be done is a discussion regarding the development of um, you know, inner city communities, etc. Um, in my opinion, there are some areas which um, you, know, the, you look at how it, the, the, the use of land is not efficient and it is that you, know, you could develop those areas. So the space is there, etc. So the housing trust and the, um, the, the private sector um, you know, could go, go in and um, you know, redevelop those areas. But it is a need for the, there is a need rather for the government to engage in that broader discussion with the general public and with the private sector entity to facilitate that sort of development. And um, you know, if that is so, then you can have access to land within close proximity of the capital, which perhaps would result in a re reduction in housing costs. But before, um, that's not just that's one methodology. There's other in terms of building costs. Building costs is expensive because of the material which we're using. Good uh, persons, um, you know, want brick and steel construction, and that is pretty pricey. So if it is that we look at alternative construction material, then that could help to reduce the price of housing. Okay. Any other issues that you would want to raise coming out of this um, new budget? Well, um, we are pleased with what we're seeing on the capital spending side, good, as well as um, the, the, the new devel the development as it relates to hydro energy, the proposal for hydro energy, right? For, um, that, that is welcome. As it relates to capital, um, you know, the infrastructure of the country needs to be developed. It lends itself to increased investment. You look at um, you know, the roads, um, a person spend lengthy time on the road, going to work, etc. It takes away from production. Good. Um, so that is a, a plus as it relates to the capital spending side. Um, provided that the hydro energy um, proposal does come to fruition, I think it is a win-win for the government and for the public in general. And we in the private sector are pleased with the mode of um, financing that the government is proposing. We, um, you know, uh, we're seeing where it is that there's actually a shift from government to government borrowing to one where it is that the government is engaging the private, private entity. And that is indeed welcomed at this point in time. So we can say that the PSOJ is overall pleased with where the government is going in terms of its vision and its spending policies. We are indeed pleased with what we are seeing. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, Theodore Mitchell from the PSOJ, thank you so much for coming to speak with us and breaking down some of the issues and content of the national budget. Thank you, Simone. Thank you for having me. All right. You've been watching PBCJ Presents. Thank you so much for watching.